Hey gamers, back in May, I was invited to participate in my middle school's career day back in Westbrook, Connecticut. In this video, I'm going to briefly talk about my journey into video game and anime music pre-recorded for the students. Because it's middle school, I want to focus more on the ambitions and passions of following your dreams because for me, middle school was an important time where that's when I decided to do that for myself. And two decades later, here I am now. So with all that out of the way, let's not waste any more time and get right to it. Hi everybody, I'm James Landino. I'm a video game music composer, anime composer, performing DJ, and general person who works in the video game industry. Um, I've been doing this for 15 years. I started doing this actually when I was your guys' age, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old. And, um, you know, I've worked with clients such as these. And I've worked on games such as those. My editor will, will do all the work. She does everything. So... You know, when I was your guys' age, I was 12 years old at the time, I think, actually. And my mom, you know, as a present, got me some music writing software. Hi, Mom. And, you know, during that time, you know, that was that was the seed that got me to start writing music. Because um, I had always had loved video games. I was, you know, six years old, you know, at the time when I first started playing video games. And I had the, the Nintendo 64 and the Game Boy and then the Dreamcast and so on and so forth. This is boomer game consoles. You know, I'm an old guy now. But, but, you know, that was always the goal. I would, even as a child, I remembered this feeling of, I want to work on video games. I have no idea how. They're all in Japan, even though, they, even though they're not. Uh, but at the time, I thought, they're all, they're all in Japan, they're all this, and I want to go do it. So that was my childhood dream. And I am, you know, you know, I'm one of the fortunate few who can say that they're doing their childhood dream, which is honestly awesome. And I... Uh, you know, so if, if there's a theme to this whole conversation, really, it's less about me doing game audio, but I will get into that. It has more to do with, you know, you can do it, right? If you have, you're, you're in middle school right now, and if you, you know, if you have this, like, this kind of fantasy idea of, you know, being an actor, working in films, you know, being, working on video games, you know, being a musician, artist, a dancer, whatever it is, you can do it. You have to work hard, and if you're passionate, you'll persevere. You gotta work really hard, though. I'll tell you that much. But it's much more possible now than it's ever been before because of technology and the internet, right? There, there are so many more tools that allow you to kind of monetize what you do, and that's the key to this, right? Because you know, the, when when I was younger, those tools didn't exist, and it wasn't as clear. Even now, it's not that clear. But even back then, it was less clear. Like, how do you really make money in music? How do you make money, you know, being an artist, right? And when I remember distinctly going to my guidance counselor in high school, and I was, and I would tell them, you know, Hi, I want to, I want to do video game music for a, a career. And the guidance counselor looks at me like, you know, with like five heads, like you're crazy. That's not, it's not a thing. And I remember them telling me something along the lines of like, have you thought about being a music teacher or a band director? And there's nothing wrong with that. I know people who love what they do as a band teacher or director. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, but that wasn't for me because I, I don't I don't like teaching. No, thank you. Um, <laughs> and but, but that was always the trick is that for a lot of adults, they don't understand what's possible. Um, and so as, a, as so I had to kind of for me, I had to figure out myself what is possible. I had to figure out my own. OK, how do I actually get a job in the industry? How do I actually, you know, get, have this career? Um, and so, you know, I did my research and I found out uh, that, oh, OK, this music school in Boston called Berkeley College of Music. Um, they have a program that that emphasizes in video game audio. And so I, I explained to my parents at the time. They, you know, I was fortunate enough to, that they were supportive of that journey and they helped, you know, I had to explain to them because again, you know, my, my, you know, my parents are, you know, they're smart and, but they're, they're smart and they're good parents and they want to make sure that, okay, James, we will support you, but we want to make sure you know what you're doing. And, you know, I, you know, I, so I had to kind of sit down and explain like, here's how I'm going to, you know, here's how I'm going to make a career. I'm going to go to school here, ideally, you know, and then there are these jobs and I'm going to get these jobs. And so that's essentially what happened. Um, I had a, I had a really kind of outline for them, the career path I wanted to do. So I went to Berkeley College of Music and focused on video game music. Um, and then I got a job uh, as a game composer and a sound designer uh, at a company called Harmonix Music Systems. You don't probably know the name, but if you do, 
you're 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 a cool kid. But more importantly, they worked on games such as Guitar Hero, Rock Band, Dance Central. So I was one of the I was a full time employee writing music, doing sound design, and building audio tech for this company. And that was all through the years I had spent studying on my own. You know, as a as a middle school and high schooler through college. And getting that career uh, path, you know, kind of outlined for me to, you know, at least be good enough to do that job. Um, you know, I had a few internships in my time t as well. I had worked, I had interned for Universal Studios, um, you know, under the director of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, his name was Gore Verbinski. Uh, and that was a whole journey of its own. Uh, for a different day, I'll talk about that, right? But um, I did that. I had also worked for another audio firm that does, like, audio as a company for other games. Like, I had done a whole bunch of stuff. But, um so so yeah so i got my degree uh in in you know video game music and that was that was what got me the gig essentially um but these days i'm not working for a company i am now a full-time freelance or independent contractor at this point uh working on my own projects so i write my own music as an independent artist but i also do commission work so i'm working with different kinds of um different kinds of clients that you know, like, like a Sega or a Square Enix, or um, I'm trying to think of what else, like like a Sony, for example, right? These are these are pretty big brands, and they reach out to me, you know, through me or my manager, and we, you know, we make that happen. So that's kind of my day to day is writing music literally every day for video game music or something adjacent to video games or anime, um, and I and I absolutely, it's it's honestly a joy. Um, so I'm kind, of, I'm kind of looking at this, this bingo sheet that I got to kind of hopefully, hopefully answer some questions. Uh, you know, like, do I have an office? Yeah, it's, it's, you're looking at it. It is my bedroom, right? My office is here. I work from home every day and I, it, working from home, even before COVID, I was working from home and I enjoyed it, right? So, so, you know, now everyone knows what working from home feels like, but in actuality, my job more or less requires me from, to work from home unless I am DJing. Also, pre-COVID, Right, I was DJing, go, you know, flying around the world, you know, flying to Japan, flying to Canada, or you know, or in the U.S. And I would be DJing for these video game or anime events, uh, performing live music that I had, you know, produced or remixing of other musicians. Um, so that's that's kind of what I do, more or less. Um, you know, what I do before this job, uh, nothing really. I I had always kind of from start to finish have been doing game audio, technically. Technically, I actually worked at a place called Atlantic Seafood, which is in the old Saybrook, and I was doing a lot of like, you know, cleaning shrimp, right, and you know, cutting fish for some suburban moms, right, and that that was what it was, and I learned a lot from what that was, but you know, obviously that's not my career right now. Um, in terms of like a salary, that's like all over the place, you know, um, because again, as a, as an independent contractor, um, it sounds so fancy, like I'm, it's just me. Right. So like like I go out and make the money for myself and that's great. But so that can range from things that can range. I'll just tell you straight up. So that can range from I make two thousand dollars a month and it's been one month where I made over ten thousand dollars a month. Right. And it's it's kind of all over the place because it depends on the project. It depends on my royalty statements. A lot of money actually as a musician is not from is a lot of money you make as a musician. It's not from music sales. But music royalties royalties are th is basically passive money you get after you release music and that's how a lot of musicians um you know even if they're not relevant you know or doing anything with their lives but they had like one big hit song that's how they that's how they live for the rest of their lives because that one song will bring them tens of thousands of dollars per month if they have that one hit single right and so for me that's the same thing but on a smaller scale so no matter what any given month, I will always make enough money to pay my rent through royalties. And essentially, in theory, I could literally do absolutely nothing for several months. Absolutely nothing. And I will be able to pay my rent, pay for food, pay for my life. It won't be great money, but it essentially, I, I have the freedom and luxury to do whatever I want because money will always come through royalties. So if you want to be a musician and you want to do this for a career, go figure out how to earn royalties because if you start now and then 10 years down the line th all those royalties adds up you'll be making hopefully you'll be making actually a lot of money so keep keep that in the back of your hat um is my job in high demand it's music everyone wants to do music in some capacity right everyone more almost everyone has thought about it um so yes it's very much high in demand and doing game music 
even though it sounds weird and nerdy, it's actually super duper high in demand. Um, and I don't mean that to, you know, to kind of scare people away from the career, uh, but essentially, you know, it, it's it's music. And, <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll tell a quick anecdote. Uh, my first semester of college, my very first semester, you know, you know, you're all excited. You're in college. You're like, yeah, like, all right, I'm at the school to learn the thing that will get me the job, hopefully, maybe. And my, I remember like, like the first week of classes, this one professor, you know, there's like 30 of us in a room and he's like, he, he literally flat out starts the lecture with all of you in this room have no value. It's like, what? All of you have no value. He's telling all of us new college students, you know, you have no value. You have nothing. And he's like, y because his whole point was that. The world, he said, the world does not need more musicians. You need to create value for yourself. That is more than just a musician. And what he, what he was trying to say was that it is not enough just to, to be a musician or a good musician. You have to do something special or different. And a lot of that, as weird as this is going to sound, a lot of, and he's right, a lot of my success has, has come from me being true to myself and me kind of understanding who I am as a person. And what I'm trying to get at here is because as a musician of my, in my position, you know, my value is me. The goal is for people to like me and to like the music that I make. Cause if they like me, they'll like the music and so on and so forth. It all kind of interchanges back and forth. Right. Um, and, and, if you if you are a unique person and, or you know you know if you figure yourself out as a person and you realize oh here's some things that are really unique about me and you reinforce that and you put that out in the world people are going to so eventually there's going to be enough people who resonate with you and at least they'll know who you are because that's the goal the goal of of succeeding in any creative industry is a combination of who you know and also a combination of of how unique or interesting are you as a person and yes, I will say that it takes it it takes a lot of work to become interesting. I was not interesting when I was thirteen. I was, and you know, maybe I was. Maybe, maybe my mom will say I was interesting, right? But at the end of the day, you know, I was a weird thirteen-year-old, you know, loner. You know, I and, and even through high school, I was a weird, you know, seventeen-year-old loner. You know, you know, I was wearing black back then. I'm wearing black now. I'm I'm a low-key and emo kid at heart, and you know. But my point is. You, 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 you know, I had to work on myself as a person so that way, you know, I could like myself. Therefore, then people could like me as if that makes sense. And I know it sounds like a weird like like pseudo therapy session that I'm kind of giving. But it's in the world of music and entertainment. It really is that it's really, of course, your skills matter as a musician or whatever you do. But in any entertainment field, I guarantee you it's about if people like you, if people think you're interesting, if, if you, if you know, and at the end of the day, and I know this for a fact, companies want by and large companies want to work with their friends. They want to work with people they like. That is the most important thing. So if people hate you, you're no matter how good you are, no one will care. So, so that, that's kind of my thoughts on that. You know, <laughs> one of the bingo things is, do you have to wear a uniform? I mean, Sometimes I wear this, right? This is my uniform. You know, this is my bedroom. This is me. Like that's that's it. You know, in terms of you know how many hours do I work a day? Um, you know that can range from you know again, when when I am on crazy deadlines like I am kind of right now, that means I'm working 60, 70 hours a week. But I love it. You know, but other times by choice or by not choice because there's not enough work, I'm working like 10, 20 hours a week, right? Or I just take two weeks off. Like, like, the, like that's that is the that is the beauty of being on your own and not working for a company if you can financially um, sustain yourself. Excuse me. So, my point is, uh, it's really you know hours per week is really up to you. And over time, you know, if you're gonna go through this journey, um, you can kind of figure out exactly what that really means of like 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 how many hours do I really want to work? Like, I know you're in middle school. It's fine. Don't worry about. It. Let's move on. Um, you know what do I like, what do I like least about my job? I would say, uh, hmm, people, people. <laughs> some people just suck. <laughs> some people just suck, and that that is also just how it goes. And you know, in my line of work, because it's a lot of it is people you deal with to get the the job in the creative industry. 
that means you're going to deal with a lot of terrible people. Some people are terrible people because they're just not good people or they're terrible professionals or a combination of both. And then you'll wonder, why the heck is this person in this position? I don't understand. So, you know, the best parts of this, the best parts of the industry are the people. The worst parts of this industry are the people. That 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 is absolutely how it is. <laughs> I like this one beginning thing that says, uh, but I don't know if you guys got this bingo sheet that I got, but one of them says to me, uh, how dangerous is your job? Well, this one time I was DJing in Florida and it was, it was two years ago. I was DJing in Florida and it was a big crowd. The whole room was filled up, right? I was the headliner, you know, performing for everyone. And at one, about five minutes into my set, I noticed one side of the crowd slowly migrated to the right. And I was like, what, what, what's going on? I didn't tell them to do that. There's not, there's no song where you cha-cha slide all the way to the right. That's not how this works. So I found out like a moment later that the, the speaker next to me, you know, that's playing music, just catches in flames, is bursting in fire. I was like, cool, great. So that's about as dangerous as, that's about as dangerous as it really gets. This is like a speaker catches on fire, you know. Sometimes my back hurts from sleeping. That's about it, right? Um, and that that's really about it. Um you know, at the end of the day, yeah, kind of to get back to this you know, weird anecdotes and stories, you know, at the end of the day, it's always a, I've, I've always been someone who has kind of, I've always beat to my own drum. I've always wanted to do what I love to do, regardless of what anyone else thought by and large. And that's much easier said than done. And I, I guess I want to kind of, kind of reinforce this point that, um, you know, you're, I'll just be, I'll be really straight with you guys. You know, you're in Westbrook, Connecticut. Not a lot of people are, especially if you're someone who feels like you don't belong or you don't understand. I understand completely. That was me. I did not belong in Westbrook, Connecticut. Sorry. Sorry for anyone who lives in Westbrook. That's just how it is. And, um, you know, I, I want to make sure I got out of Westbrook because of, for those reasons. And I, I went to Boston and then now I'm here. I'm in LA. Right. And, and I, my point is, you know, if you feel like you don't belong you know, you will, you will, kind of, you will always kind of deal with that, and that's okay. It's totally okay. Not only is it okay, that will often be your, actually, your greatest asset, especially if you're someone who's passionate about something that is different than what everyone else wants to do. Um, so, so at the end of the day, I'm telling, I'm just, I want to say to all of you, like, like, some people, you know, I think as you get older, you might think about jobs that are more like, you know, a little less risky, I guess. Right. Because it's, it's not clear how you make money in the industry. Right. It's not clear exactly how you'd be an entertainer. Um, and a lot of that, which I'm not going to go into because I don't have time. It's just a lot of it is just, you know, unfortunately, is kind of figuring out yourself and figuring out what's right for you in your journey. Um, and at the end of the day, the, thanks to the Internet. There, there are tons of communities and resources and tools and people who are so down to help young people. And that, that goes, by the way, if anyone here is wants to be a musician, if they want to be a video game composer, if they want to work in video games, you know, if, if anything of that sort, please contact me. Um, contact me in this email below. Hopefully it shows up. Thanks to my editor. Thank you, editor. Um, and please reach out to me and I'd be happy to help you and talk to you about any sort of stuff, you know, at, at any point, because I, I love to help people. And, you know, I didn't have a mentor growing up. I meant, you know, my mentor was mostly me because, you know, no one knew, had any clue how to get into the video game industry. I had to figure that out more or less on my own and find people who could help me get closer to that goal. So I'm happy to be a mentor for anyone who wants to do that. But if you're, you know, if you're someone who doesn't, you know, who kind of resonates with what I'm talking about, you know, and wants to do something creative or passionate, you know, or their, their passion project per se, please also hit me up too. Because at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. You know, our, 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 our time in this world is shorter than we think. And, you know, I, I made as a, this is kind of weird to say as a 15 year old, but when I was 15 years old, I made a clear choice. I was like, you know what? F it. I've, I've decided I'm going to have a miserable, I'm going to sacrifice my high school and arguably my college, you know, my college years just so I can have a great adult life. And boy, howdy, am I glad that worked out because that, that would have been a really terrible, sad story if that's not the case. Um, but that's the reality of it, though, because I know a lot of people who, you know, for better or worse, 
you know, may not love what they do. They wish they had done that thing, right? And I, you know, at the end of the day, I didn't want to be that kind of person for better or worse. So, so to, to all of you, um, you know, I want to say, you know, good luck, you know, you know, please pursue, you know, in my opinion, please pursue the things that you love doing because if you, if you work hard and focus, you can absolutely do it no matter what anyone else tells you. I've had plenty of people tell me to my face when I graduated high school that I was not going to succeed in this and they thought I was a loser. So, you know, you're talking to a loser right now, spoilers, but I'm a loser who did it. And I, I wish you guys all well. And uh, yeah, thank you again for having me. I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.